Hello, fellow HubSpotters. This is Emma with Kiwi Creative. And today we're discussing some of the changes HubSpot has recently made to their HIPAA compliance and privacy regulations that's available to the enterprise tier of all hubs. Now, requisite disclaimer, we're pretty smart HubSpotters, if we do say so ourselves, but we're definitely not lawyers. The information in this video regarding HIPAA and the privacy compliance of HubSpot is not intended to be taken as legal advice. You may neither rely on this video as legal advice nor as a recommendation of any legal understanding. However, please refer to the HubSpot sensitive data terms linked below for more information. Also, the HubSpot Trust Center will be linked below, again, for your further discovery. So first things first, what is this sensitive data HIPAA compliance hubbub? Well, with HubSpot's most recent rollout, Safely using sensitive data such as government IDs, medical records, and bank account numbers is now supported. Industries across the board can benefit from this, but specifically healthcare, finance, and insurance. Traditionally, they've had to piece together point solutions to get a single view of their customers, all while managing complex compliance processes. Of course, that's led to disjointed teams, customer experiences, and missed opportunities. Well, now, HubSpot customers in those industries and beyond can use HubSpot CRM to safely store sensitive data, giving them a complete view of the customer in a single place. Backed by robust security and privacy protections, this also includes operating HubSpot's products within compliance of HIPAA. With this update, the most unified customer record for marketing sales and service teams is now even stronger. So let's talk a little bit about that team use case. So certainly by storing customer data in HubSpot, companies across both regulated and non-industries can now take full advantage of the customer platform. Marketers can improve lead gen by collecting sensitive info where customers have consented to its use and then use that for marketing purposes, which will allow for safer segmentation of audiences, targeted marketing campaigns, and of course, can power that marketing automation. Sales teams can now personalize prospecting with a complete view of the prospects to create more relevant connections. Automated deal management processes that require customers to provide sensitive data in forms like a loan application can also now be streamlined. Customer success teams can create a single customer record for help desk reps, um, as well as account management by securely storing sensitive data required to deliver that tailored service. Now, before we really get into this demo, I really wanna make sure we're all on the same page. I mentioned it prior, but the sensitive data HIPAA compliant feature is only available at the enterprise tier. Now that's of any hub, but enterprise tier. Only users with super admin permission can turn on sensitive data. And once sensitive data is turned on, it cannot be turned off. You're stuck with it. Lastly, sensitive data properties are unavailable in certain tools, and that includes personalization tokens, for obvious reasons, sandboxes, chatbots, and playbooks. So first things first when opening the Pandora's box that is sensitive data, we need to define our strategy and necessary fields. Uh, it's better to think thoroughly through your strategy before pushing any buttons, especially when it comes to sensitive data fields since there's less editability than you're used to in HubSpot. I'm going to be utilizing our custom properties worksheet to help me think through the process, and you can download your own copy in the description below. Using this worksheet not only highlights what may already exist in HubSpot that's at your disposal, but it also helps you consider um, what data actually needs to be collected, how you decide to gather that, what type of field do you think it will be? Um, will this be coming in via form or import, for example? Um, of course, there's all the support articles and videos and blog articles at your disposal. Um, and then a matrix that you are able to work through yourself, uh, not only to document and share with team members, but to help ensure a more seamless process. So let's get into how we actually start wrapping our heads around the sensitive data feature now available in HubSpot. It's quite simple, actually. We're going to visit the settings cog in the top right-hand corner. 
In the left hand menu, what we want to navigate down onto under account management is privacy and consent. And you'll notice big old orange box configure sensitive data. Now, of course, if you're pro starter free, you're not seeing this, right? This is only available on enterprise, but that's sales, content, marketing, ops, service. So any of the hubs has to be enterprise. All I'll do is say configure sensitive data. And remember, before I turn this on, there's no going back. Once I turn this on, it is on. You can't turn it off. I can specify what type of information I desire to store. You should be sure because you've gone through this exercise. If you're not quite sure, I potentially advise to pick all of them. That way you're covered. If you select the we are a HIPAA covered entity or business associate, um, just know that you have to be, right? Um, so if you're not quite sure, if you're debating, mm, am I personal and financial, select both. You can always go back and update. Um, but right now we're just going to start with personal sensitive for this exercise. Um, I can, and you'll, it's warning you, can't be turned off, right? It's once again giving you that same link that I've shared and is linked under this video as well. And it's simply saying by turning this on, that's that. I'm turning it on. So let's do it. Uh, okay. That's that. It's turned on, right? So now what I would do, and you'll notice here it's letting you know what's cooking. Uh, for example, HubSpot employees. So if you ever contact those lovely folks via chat, phone, email, um, through the support link on HubSpot's interface, um, they can't see this stuff. So you'll probably have to screen share or take pictures if you need to troubleshoot that, for example. Uh, it's warning you again, HubSpot AI is not going to use this sensitive data in order to learn. Uh, you have to be a super admin in order to access this. Partner admins like myself and other Kiwi Creative team members can't do this, right? So that's turned on. You're always able to go edit these settings. You're always able to go check recommendations, right? Um, but now all we're going to do is turn our worksheet into a reality. And we do that the exact same way we've, do, we've done custom properties since forever. We navigate down to the data management portion in the settings. I'm going to select properties. And of course, I'm in the demo portal, so looks really wonky. And I simply determine what am I going to pick? So another example in my worksheet was veteran status. And I'm going to select a group here. Field type. From here, of course, I can add my usual information. Field type. So if we want a drop down select, for example, maybe they're active, maybe retired, maybe discharged, uh, maybe other. I'm making it up as I go along. Rules per usual. Are we collecting this in a form? Are we asking people to provide additional information? That's the typical option, yes or no. You'll notice now we have an extra sensitive data checkbox. Now, again, not sensitive versus sensitive. And if you've opted into the highly sensitive beta, which I linked more information about, there will be that additional option. So I can specify sensitive. I could specify everyone can view and edit this data, super admins only. And of course, I can take that a step further if I wanted to either really lock it down or if I wanted to meet in the middle and specify field level permissions. So in this case, I can preview it. These are my options. I can create. And just like that, we have a typical form a uh, uh, field of which you all are, are very used to creating. You'll notice now there's that additional information. This is indeed sensitive. And of course, it can't be changed after the property is created. Right. So what do we do now? We have these sensitive data fields. Really, what we want to be cognizant of is managing it. Of course, we're collecting it. Now what? So what I talked about a moment ago, we might want to consider, and again, this is an enterprise tier feature, you could consider creating field level permissions. So that can either really, really lock it down. So not just any super admin can see it, maybe a very specific person, maybe a member of the finance team only, 
or HR team. Uh, or you can meet in the middle where not just super admins can access and edit this data, but perhaps one step above, maybe not just everyone and their mother, right? Of course, we wanna be cautious when using sensitive data in views, lists, workflow triggers, reports, right? And I mentioned prior, if your account allows HubSpot employees access in order to troubleshoot uh, issues when you contact them for support, they won't have access to this. So do keep that in mind. So now that you've set up some sensitive data fields, we really have to be thoughtful about what now? What are we going to do with this information? What other dominoes are falling potentially because we have this set up? So let's talk a little bit about what this affects. Uh, forms, first and foremost, HubSpot and non-HubSpot forms can now, with these fields, be used to collect sensitive information, which is encrypted and synced into your HubSpot CRM securely. Attachments is another asset we can consider. You can now store files containing sensitive info in HubSpot, but please do note that only files uploaded after the sensitive data was turned on will have this additional protection. Anything you uploaded prior is not covered. Workflows is another feature. Uh, workflows do not enforce field level permissions. So that essentially allows all users in your portal to have access to that sensitive data. So keep that in mind, right? Uh, uh, this is not a blanket effect where everything's protected in all areas. That is indeed a crack in the armor. HubSpot's AI tools, uh, obviously is talk of the town since inbound, but also something to be considered when we're talking sensitive data. The sensitive data properties, and this may be a good thing depending on your perspective, will not be used to train HubSpot's AI models. So if you're using Breeze and Copilot to try to pull info, it might not work with your sensitive data. The data center is another area we need to talk about very quickly. Is your HubSpot data stored in Europe or in America? Uh, sensitive data can be stored either of those places, but once you turn on sensitive data, you can't migrate to a different data center. So you need to determine, do you like Europe or America better right now? And only then would you turn on your sensitive data feature. So as we've covered, finally, with the addition of sensitive data, HubSpot is now HIPAA compliant and suitable to store your sensitive data needs. However, as you can see very clearly, there are indeed other factors that you need to consider before pulling this trigger. Don't forget, any updates to your portal are first worth strategizing and documenting. Get that unfun stuff out of the way first. So download our custom properties worksheet linked below for a little bit of guidance. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.